been a growing call for government to invest more in indigenous language reading materials and to address the digital divide that being the gap between those with and without access to computers. This comes after a study found over 80% of grade 4 pupils cannot read for meaning. Now, UNISA's Professor Mpom Gwepe has used his 2023 Comrades Marathon participation as a fundraiser to boost efforts to promote children's books in indigenous languages. This collaboration between UNISA and other language advocacy organizations aims to address the reading crisis, marginalization of indigenous languages and poorer students' lack of access to computers. For more on this now, I'm joined by the director of UNISA School of Arts, Professor Mpom Gwepe, who we find in the United States, in the state of Louisiana, as we speak. Prof, thank you so much for your time this evening. I take it you have fully recovered from your participation in your 10th, yes, your 10th Comrades Marathon. You went for, I think they call it a green number that you get after number 10. Tell us why it was so important for you to do your 10th Comrades Marathon for this very important cause. Good evening, and uh, good evening to your viewers. Our prof, you've uh, muted yourself, home. please. Good evening, and uh, good evening to uh, your viewers back at home. And thank you for having me here. And indeed, I was excited to do my 10th uh, because it is a special one, special in the sense that... Uh, I have now a permanent number. Mm. And tell us about the importance for you of running this race for this specific cause, wanting to put the focus on the need for new, more books to, and more reading material to be published in indigenous languages. Yes, as I indicated that it was special for me, I thought that I would, should also do something special because of the uh, the statement that you just said in your introductory remarks that uh, less than 3% uh, of the books are produced in indigenous languages. And the recent survey also showed that uh, less than uh, eight, more than 80% of uh, grade four learners couldn't read uh, for comprehension. So it was necessary for me to be involved in this uh, project of uh, raising funds so that we can produce uh, high quality books in indigenous languages and people uh, read better when they read in their, the mm. language of their mother tongue. And indeed read stories that are relevant for them in their lived experience. When you heard the, the South Africa's results in that recent um, a research that was done showing that 81% of South African grade four learners struggle to read for meaning in any language, um, and that's compared to 78% in 2016. We haven't had good numbers for quite some time. Um, what went through your mind when you saw those results? For somebody who focuses on the arts and the humanities, that must have been um, pretty, pretty catastrophic for you to read about. Indeed, it was, uh, uh, it was not shocking, but expected in the sense that uh, we've got uh, uh, the language policies at the elementary level and also at the institution of higher learning, we are required to also teach in uh, indigenous languages. But the majority of people, including those who are supposed to teach in these languages, they can't uh, read. Uh, uh, they can't read this or even the the terminology in, te in these languages uh, is limited. They can't. Uh, most people they can't read in these in indigenous languages. They prefer English, mm -hmm. but we are not uh, because we do have a, a policy, and even the constitution allows these uh, languages uh, to to also uh, to break the parity of esteem of languages. Mm -hmm. So we need to also elevate these uh, languages to the level of uh, English and to some extent maybe Africans. So. It was indeed shocking. Then we really need to start at the elementary level so that the kids can grow up reading comprehensively in these languages so that at a higher level they are able to read and write and it will also help them to think uh, properly when they are using their own mother tongue. 
Now, the Basic Education Minister and her team held a briefing just a few days ago, and they addressed these findings and said that there needed to be context provided behind the numbers of that, um, of that research. Um, uh, many, however, criticised them for just coming up with excuses and that the Basic Education Department hasn't done enough to arrest um, uh, this problem in South Africa's um, uh, reading and comprehension of our, uh, of our young people. We've got the policies there. What do you think should be done? Because the minister said, oh, it should also be up to families and communities to encourage reading. Um, but if you look at the context of our, our history, um, more really should be done in, in mainstream education, uh, isn't it? Where do you think the problem lies? I think uh, based, because we've got the policies, uh, there must be resources and funding for implementation of the policy because you can have a policy. If you can't implement it, it's as good as you don't have that policy. Uh, what the Department of uh, Basic Education can do, uh, uh, based on, I had the minister uh, last week talking uh, uh, during the literacy, uh, the, the mobile awards of the AFPOP in partnership with Oxford University. Mm -hmm. What they can do is use the results of the, the Eastern Cape uh, experiment that they had for over 12 years to roll it over to other provinces so that uh, if it, they should share those uh, results to see, uh, because I had the minister saying that there were positive uh, outcomes of that experiment, wherein they were taught in uh, indigenous languages. They, and uh, those kids uh, performed better than those who were taught in English mm. as they advanced to the high level. So I'm thinking that if the results were positive, the department should uh, extend this uh, experiment to other provinces so that there is, uh, these uh, uh, languages are also given a fair chance of uh, development. And if... Indeed, the communities should be involved, the families should be involved. But the resources, like uh, uh, the reason why I also uh, raised the funds for this is, is because when you go to the bookshops, you need uh, books on, in indigenous languages. Yes. You are unable to access such books. Mm. And uh, it, with this uh, project, we were thinking that uh, uh, once we are able to raise funds, the books that are already available, we can create a catalog so that people can access these mm. books, so that the families that the department is talking about, they can access mm. the books. But currently, they are not even able to access the books. Mm. So, and going forward also, we have to also produce quality books in large quantity. So that, uh, that way we will be able to... Uh, help uh, the literacy project in South Africa. You make a very important point there that, of course, also speaks about um, uh, the huge lack, huge lack of resources um, uh, towards library. Both, both public libraries have been lacking in areas that have always been underserviced historically as well, but also only about 8% of our government schools in the country have a library, according to something that I read uh, the other day. And those two things, public government libraries in the areas that have been under-resourced for, as well as basic school libraries could really be used as a vehicle for books printed in indigenous languages telling relevant stories to encourage at least um, a reading habit from a very young age. Yes, due to the lack of resources, uh, infrastructure, the communities, uh, uh, in some communities, I can just give you an example where I come from in the uh, Bloberg municipality. Mm -hmm. There are less than five. Uh, there are less than five public libraries serving many communities, mm -hmm. and uh, the government through the social uh, the the, in, the uh, library grant, they're supposed to build the libraries throughout uh, these uh, uh, rural areas, and where possible, if they build the school, that uh, school library should be able to even serve the community. Mm -hmm. the ecosystem of the, the libraries. And where there is a, a public library, it should be able to serve several schools. But currently, the infrastructure is lacking. Uh, the books are lacking. People don't even have access to these books, and then they won't even be able to read. So we've got a, a mammoth task, and we have to start somewhere, as they say, a journey of 1,000 miles begin with one step. 
us from Bugu and Ilifa and UNISA, we have also started with that journey by uh, raising these uh, funds so that we can produce those books. But the government should also come to party and uh, build libraries at uh, public libraries and uh, school libraries. Indeed, many, many miles that you've already started taking by running that, comrades, in honor of this cause. We thank you so much for your time. Um, that's the director of UNISA School of Arts, Professor Mpom Gwepe. And if you do want to find out more, the campaign is called Hashtag Racing for Our Languages. And you can go to the, the, the website racingforourlanguages.com. And on there, you can find out how you can get involved, how you can donate still to this cause, even though he's already completed uh, the race. And that organization also doing great work uh, in creating and what they call an engaging and innovative digital encyclopedia that houses and reviews literature and bodies of work that will be South Africa's first comprehensive database of children's literature. They're calling it the Pukupedia. That's the Puku organization. And you can go to racingforourlanguages.com to find out more.